Hello, I've been riding Yamaha's new R3 at the launch in Spain. Now, there's a good feeling about motorcycling this year. Superbikes have gone silly again, and sub 500cc machines are more exciting than they've been in decades. Last year, KTM gave us the fully fared RC390. This year, Kawasaki introduced the Z300, a naked version of the excellent Ninja 300. And now Yamaha has launched this new addition to its YZFR sports bike family. It's all new with a parallel twin 321cc engine acting as a stress member in a diamond steel frame. That's 25 more cubes than the Ninja and it's 42 horsepower to the Ninja's 37. It's good for A2 license holders obviously, but Yamaha is also hoping to appeal to unrestricted license holders with what they call a sports bike for everyday use. It's an eager, engaging little sports bike with a revy, flexible engine which is as useful on the road as on track. It's effortless. It felt like a machine I'd been riding for years, not one I'd just swung a leg over for the first time. It's got a good steering angle with high clip-on bars making for easy low speed turns. There's a good top end with a red line quite high at 12,500. It doesn't feel quite as free revving as a Ninja which red lines at 13,000, but that could be down to the R3's better spread of power across the range. Where the Kawasaki almost has a power band, the R3 feels more like a big bike. It's stronger at 5,000, letting you be lazier about changing gear. The launch includes a couple of brief stretches of motorway where the R3 felt comfortable without too much vibration. It's upright for a sports bike like the RC390, but there's some wind protection from the screen. Naturally, the ride also included miles of perfect twisty roads, and the R3 was loads of fun, easy to chuck around, but for the first time I wanted a little bit more bite from the front brake. It's as much to do with the lever as a single disc. The power's there but I had to move my two fingers a little further out to find it. I suppose any rider will adapt to that. When I mentioned it to another rider who brakes with all his fingers, he didn't know what I was talking about. The suspension, KYB preload adjustable shock and non-adjustable fork feels softer than the Ninja's but better damp than the RC390s, which is a bit bouncy. Uh, it coped well on the carefully chosen roads of the launch ride. I wonder whether it would fare quite so well on some of our own battered roads at home. After some track-like roads, we hit some actual track with two 20-minute sessions at Circuit de Califat, which is full of hairpins and ideal for exploiting the R3's strengths. Claimed weight is 169 kilograms with a full tank of fuel. Some readers don't seem too impressed by that, but the R3 feels light enough to throw around like a toy. It's a smoother experience than the RC390, less about mid-range punch, and it's easy to thrash for all the 42 horsepower all the time. Top speed was an indicated 109 miles per hour when it hit the rev limiter in six. The ABS, which comes as standard, activated a couple of times running into corners, but otherwise I wasn't aware of it. And a couple of times the Michelin Pilot Street rear tyre juddered sideways. It's not ideal for the track, but I suppose stickier rubber would compromise Yamaha's ambition that the R3 be just as good for long distances and city use. It's an ambition which I think has been realised. Commute on it, thrash it, gain experience on it if you're an A2 licence holder, just cherish and enjoy it if you're not. Some parts don't look that special, like the steel gear selector, but it is competitively priced at 4799 plus on the road charges, so we can forgive Yamaha for making savings somewhere. It's a couple of hundred quid less than the RC390 and a hundred quid less than the Ninja 300. It doesn't seem such a lot of money for a motorcycle that, while A2 compliant, may be all the bike many of us need.